Good evening. evening. Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes, and a special welcome to any guests with us and those joining us from home via the live stream. Today we celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Adoration will be available for 30 minutes after Mass. The presider for this liturgy is our pastor, Father Scott Wimsett. Please stand as we begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we have completed our Lenten observance, and now have begun the solemn celebration of the Easter feast. On these great days, it is our duty to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have salvation, life, and resurrection. These oils tonight were blessed and consecrated at the Chrism Mass on Tuesday evening by Archbishop Kurtz for use throughout the year. With them, the sick will be anointed, those awaiting the waters of rebirth will be strengthened, and those who are baptized and confirmed will share the mission of Christ, the Anointed One. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, who fills these oils with life and grace. The saving work of Jesus Christ is continued in the church. The oil of the sick. May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body and soul. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. 
The oil of the catechumens. Through the anointing with this oil, may our catechumens, who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism, be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. Blessed be God forever. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Holy Chrism. Through anointing with this perfumed chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and presbyters who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup. After supper, saying, this is the cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For often, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed. for He is clean all over, so you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, 
you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. On November the 29th, 1987, I was ordained a deacon, a transitional deacon in the church. And that following Lenten season, I came home and my pastor, Father Wayne Jenkins, put me to work uh, helping in the parish. And one of my first duties uh, during that liturgical season was the washing of the feet. And the person I got assigned to to wash feet was my mom. (laughs) And with all the solemnity I could muster, I bent over to wash my mom's feet, and as I'm pouring the water and drying her feet, she leans forward and she said, I used to do that to you. Try to keep a straight face and all that. But tonight, as we gather, there are some things that we're not doing. And suddenly, it almost seems as if we've taken out a a big moment of our Holy Thursday celebration. And maybe in some respects we have. But look what we've added tonight. We have the choir back that adds so much. We have people back church, and there's an excitement in the church this evening. Because remember, a year ago, where we were. And I think that we've heard the message loud and clear, what you and I are called to be about. To follow the teacher and the master and what he calls us to be about. We know what we're called to do. We follow his example. And in so many ways, instead of maybe physically washing someone's feet, we've stepped up and done other things to reach out and do the very love-like thing. Maybe it was filling up the bins for Sister Visitor or Scholar House or the Schumann Center or the St. John Center. Or maybe you have brought in straws or maybe utensils for the school kids to use. Maybe you've been a sub in the school along the way. Maybe, and you can fill in the blanks. Maybe you don't have to bend over and literally wash someone's feet, but you know the call to service when you see it. That's what the gospel tonight is about. And it's intimately tied to what we do at the table of the Lord. We learn about our story around the table. We listen to God's word. We hear that call from Exodus, where that beautiful reading, our second reading tonight. And then the gospel that we hear, the example that is set before us. And you and I hear the voice of Jesus as he speaks to us and what he asks of us. Maybe we don't fully understand the mystery that's unfolding, but we will. We will know it, and we will recognize it in its fullness. That's what he tells his disciples tonight. And he directs it to Simon Peter. And maybe he ought to know better, but even those closest to Jesus sometimes struggle with what he's trying to set before them. So tonight we gather and we listen with hearts open and hearts excited and hearts beating out of love for not only for God, but for God's holy people. We gather in prayer this evening and we're called to serve. That intimately tied to being nourished and fed on the word of God and on the gift of love itself, himself, we're called to take that love and share it in the world. 
to put it in service. And sometimes it does mean getting down on our hands and knees to serve our sisters and our brothers. And so as we meditate on the holy word of God and continue to reflect more deeply on the mystery that unfolds before us, tonight a mandate is given. And it's a call to love, a loving service to our brothers and our sisters. So look around tonight. Maybe you're seated in a pew with a family member and at the sign of peace you will give that sign of love to your family member and maybe turn in a gesture of love and peace to a family member or a friend that you haven't seen in a while. But a joyous call tonight as we begin the celebration of the Triduum, those holy three days, begins with the institution of the Lord's Supper. And it's not just a meal, it's a gift of love to you and to me. And as we celebrate it, it gives us the courage and the strength and the energy to do the things we need to do as faithful disciples of Jesus. So as we continue our prayer this evening, we continue to, to think about, to pray about, to reflect on, what does Jesus call us to be about? What does he call me to? What does he ask of me? Maybe like a Simon Peter, we struggle with it. But in the end, we will know. The gift of loving service and he shows us how. On this holy night, we lift our prayers and petitions to the Lord. Our response is, loving God, hear our prayer. That all members of the church might be strengthened and sanctified by the celebration of our most sacred feast, the Holy Trinity, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. That all peoples of our broken world might come to know the tender, compassionate, and saving love of Christ, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. That those who seek the Easter sacraments during these holiest of days embrace their future as a disciple of Christ, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. That all gathered here might humbly love and serve one another as Jesus commanded at the Last Supper, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Saving God, you have called us to yourself through the witness of Jesus, your Son. Hear our prayers that we might celebrate these holy days with reverence and fidelity through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the mighty Father. <clears throat> Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. To you, therefore, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. <clears throat> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. If you're in a pew with a family member, a loved one, please offer now the sign of peace. If not, a gesture of peace to your neighbors and friends and to those at home watching the live stream. God's peace and love with you today. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please kneel. 